Thank you to Blinkist for supporting the channel and sponsoring today's video. When talking about minimalism, we often talk about the things we don't buy, or things to get rid of, or things to not spend money on, and that is all fine. But another important part of minimalism is making space in your life for things that do add value, and sometimes these can be actual things. So space in terms of just space in your home, but also how we spend our time, money, and energy. So today I thought it'd be fun to share 13 of the best purchases I've ever made as a minimalist. Why 13? Because that's how many I could come up with. <laughs> and these are all things that add value by making my life easier or more enjoyable, or that enrich my life in one way or another. Welcome back my friends, and if you're new here, my name is Vera, and this is a place where you can get tips and inspiration for living a simpler, happier, and calmer life. So be sure to hit subscribe down below if you want to follow along with future videos. Just because I know that people are going to ask, I will make sure to post a link to the products that I mentioned in the description box below if I can find it. But just keep in mind that just because these things work for me, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will work for you. So do your own research and make your own decisions about your purchases. One thing that I would never want to live without is a set of two good, warm, cozy throw blankets. And we always used to have one, just this one, uh, but this winter we decided to get another one since it's the two of us here. Not only do they make me feel happy and snuggly because of how cozy they look in our home, but a throw blanket is such a practical item. I'm always amazed by how effective they are in keeping me warm. And because we like to curl up under a blanket in the winter, we really don't have to use our heaters as much. We usually set our thermostat to around 17, 18 degrees Celsius, and we rarely have to put it higher than that because we dress warm, we have our blankets, and especially with the way that prices have risen currently, I feel like this is an investment that will quickly earn its money back. I also just really love the colors, the fabrics, they feel so nice and cozy, and especially I like to have like a 30 minute reading break at the end of the afternoon before I start cooking dinner on the couch, and these just help to make that moment kind of extra special curling up under a blanket, so I just really like them. Something else I love is my wake up light, which is also called a sunrise alarm clock. I actually looked it up in my email because I was curious and I bought it around 10 years ago. I've used it every day since then and it still works perfectly. Especially in the winter time, I find it much easier to get up in the morning when my room is already bright. And I just like waking up slowly to the sounds of chirping birds or the ocean waves. <laughs> and I also use it as a nightlight uh, when I'm reading in bed before I go to sleep. The cool thing about this one is that it mimics sunrise in the morning and sunset in the evening. So instead of waking up to just the really annoying alarm clock sound, which I have come to hate, <laughs> you will just slowly and gradually wake up because your room is getting brighter and the birds are chirping. And it's just, it makes for a nice, gentle, more positive way to start my day. And I really like it. Next up, <laughs> you knew it was coming, my e-reader. So I can just picture some of you right now going like, yeah. <laughs> and some of you going like, no, <laughs> because just some people prefer paper books and I get it. But for me, my e-reader has truly changed my life for the better. I have a thousand reasons why I love this thing so much. I mean, of course, it's a huge space saver. I like to own my books because I like to read them again and again. And I have over a hundred books just on this little tiny thing. I also like that I can select my own font, font size, margin sizes, line spacings. So it just makes for a really enjoyable way to read your books. And also, I read my books in English, so if I don't know what a word means, I can just click on it and have a little dictionary pop up and tell me what it means. I also like that this Kobo has an e-ink screen, which means that it reads more like paper as opposed to if you read it from an iPad, for example. There's no backlight or blue light to this thing at all, so just like with a regular book, you will need to read it by a lamp or with sunlight which I actually prefer. And that also means that I only have to charge this thing like once every three months, even though I use it every day. So I always forget to charge it. <laughs> 
Um, and also, I find that ebooks are usually cheaper than the physical copies. And speaking of reading books, I quickly want to thank today's sponsor, which is Blinkist. I've been using them myself for a while now, and what they do is that they take non-fiction books and podcasts and they pull out the key takeaways and ideas from them and turn them into short summaries. And you can read or listen to them in about 15 minutes and get a good idea of what the book is about. I use Blinkist not as a substitute for reading the full book, but either to get a good and quick refresher of books I've already read as a reminder of what I've learned, or to scope out other non-fiction books I might be interested in reading, so I will get a good idea about the key ideas from that book in 15 minutes, and if it's something I'd like to learn more about, in which case I will also read the book. What I also like about Blinkist is that they have over 5,000 titles, but they are spread out over many different categories, because I'm not really interested in the whole like hustle culture, productivity, a trend right now, so I don't really read books like that. But they also have books about health, um, happiness, mindfulness, culture, the environment, philosophy, all kinds of things that I'm actually interested in. So recently I read the summary of The Things You Can Only See When You Slow Down by Hyman Sunim, and I got reminded of the idea that the world and life can slow down as soon as we learn to slow down our own mind, which is something I am working on again <laughs> myself recently. Right now, Blinkist has an offer where if you use my link in the description box, then you will get a free seven day trial just to try them out. And if you want to get the premium subscription, you can get 25% off on that as well. So feel free to check them out. This next one I feel like is such a life hack, and that is a French press for loose leaf tea. And I feel like I always talk about my French press, especially on Patreon with the monthly tea time chats but it just works so well. They're usually really affordable, they're easy to clean, and I'm just, I'm a big fan. I like to drink a lot of loose leaf tea, and with this thing, you don't need those disposable tea bags or all the packaging that comes from tea that is already in tea bags. And you also don't need those metal strainers, which I have always found kind of annoying because the tea goes through the holes and ends up in your water anyway. And with this, you just add the tea, add the water, let it steep, pour it in your glass, and it's super easy. I also find that the tea tastes better because the leaves, they have all the room that they need to kind of dance around in the water. And I just rinse it throughout the day and then I'll clean it before I go to sleep at night. And it's a real tea hack. Similarly, about a year and a half ago, we switched our coffee setup from a Nespresso capsule machine to an espresso machine, and I'm really happy with it. The one we got was pretty low end in terms of pricing, but I just figured I don't need any of those like fancier, more expensive ones. The quality of the coffee is really good, and we don't have any more waste in terms of those annoying coffee cups, stuff like that, and I just grind my own beans, it smells amazing in the morning, and it makes really good espresso. If you drink lots of coffee, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this setup because it does take more time making the coffee as well as cleaning afterwards. But since me and my boyfriend only drink about like three, maybe four cups of coffee per week, it's totally worth it. I love playing barista <laughs> and I'm having a lot of fun with it. I am really sensitive to sounds and noise and we live on a very noisy street. So something that made a huge difference for me was investing in a good quality pair of noise canceling headphones. They help me out with my work, with editing videos and mixing in music and stuff like that. But also me and my boyfriend both work from home and we don't have like a home office or anything because this is a one bedroom apartment. And so we work at the same table and he is in a lot of meetings, like half the time <laughs> he is in a meeting talking and all that talking used to really distract me and drain my energy. And now I just pop these on and I can focus on my work. They also came in this really nice case, which I like. It's really sturdy and I can bring them with me on the go and I don't have to worry about them getting damaged, which is nice. I always have to laugh when I read these comments from people asking like, what is up with minimalists and their plants? <laughs> And I think not all minimalists have plants, but many of us do. For me, they're just a good investment. I like that they help me to bring some greenery and nature into my home, and it just feels relaxing and comforting. 
And I feel like you can spend 10 euros on flowers and enjoy them for a week, or you can spend 10 euros on a plant and enjoy it for years. So for me, the choice is really easy. I still like flowers and sometimes I'll get flowers for my birthday or our anniversary or something, and I do really still enjoy them. But I just think that plants are ultimately better value for your money. You can even use your plants and propagate them and make new ones with the same plant. And I also just really like taking care of them. It's something I enjoy. Next up is my phone. This is a Samsung A41, but that's not really my point. <laughs> the important thing is that I opted for a cheaper model phone and it was about 200 euros. I will use this for years and years until it becomes unusable. And it's a SIM only, so I only have to pay nine euros a month and I have more than enough internet data, minutes, everything. For me, fancier, more expensive phones are just not worth it. I wanna be able to call people, use WhatsApp, use YouTube, check my email, and I can do all that on a cheaper model phone. And this one isn't even that old. It still gets all the updates and everything, but it's just that this is from Samsung's A product line instead of from their S product line which is more premium and that little difference can easily knock off a few hundred euros off the price. Another one of my favorite possessions is my yoga mat and I used to have a really cheap kind of flimsy one but when I learned that I really want to use my mat a lot for a long time I chose to get a really high quality one instead. This one is non-slippery, it's longer, it's wider, it's thicker. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it offers great support. I used to have like pain in my knees with the old one, but with this thing, never anything like that. And I feel very confident that I can use this for decades or maybe even lifetime because I have seriously used this thing for at least a couple times a week for years now and there is no wear and tear on it whatsoever. So if you only use your yoga mat occasionally, then I would recommend going for a cheaper one. But if you like to use it a lot or if you have sensitive knees like me, then I recommend going for a higher quality one that is thicker and offers more support and that can last you years and years. And you don't even have to just use it for yoga. I feel like one of the best things about owning a mat is that you can exercise at home using workout videos online or something like that and it can save you on gym memberships and unless you actually like going to the gym, in which case tell me how you can do that. <laughs> Uh, but for me, I like that I have this mat, I can just do my exercises at home and it's a great investment because you don't have to pay for a membership. Next up, this is silly, but I really enjoy my sports bra. Uh, it's my favorite that I've ever owned. I used to have just one, but now I have it in two colors. It's from Organic Basics. It's high quality, it's comfortable, it dries quickly, and I just think it's really great. And Organic Basics makes their things in an ethical and sustainable way, which is a nice bonus. I have more of their things. I also bought this sweater, for example, and it's always high quality. Sometimes things can be really simple, and something I still really love is my glass water bottle. I take this with me everywhere I go, basically, so I always have my water. I like that this is glass instead of plastic. Naturally, having your own reusable bottle is much better for the environment and you could also fill it up a couple times a day when you're at home to make sure that you're hydrating enough. So it's really simple, but definitely has made a big difference for me. My life became so much easier the moment I decided to hire a professional accountant. <laughs> I feel like running your own business is all fun and games until you have to do your taxes. And I was so stressed out about that part of things. I literally could not sleep sometimes thinking about it. I spent so much time trying to figure it all out on my own and worrying if I was making mistakes until I just decided to hire someone who has that knowledge, who has that experience. She's amazing and she has paid back for herself in more ways than one. There is so much free information out there that usually what I'll try to do is just figure things out on my own but I've learned that sometimes it really makes more sense to hire a professional, whether that is a therapist or a life coach or a dietitian or any other kind of professional. Maybe you happen to know someone who can help you, but that was very much a valuable lesson for me. Lastly, my trusted friend, our PlayStation. 
Now, of course, this is in no way a necessity. It's very much a luxury, but it's one of my favorite things and I use it every day. We usually wait a while when the new version comes out until the first like craziness has passed. Uh, but we were lucky enough recently to upgrade to a PS5. We even got quite a bit of money back for trading in our old PS4, which was great. So we got a good deal on it. And one of my favorite hobbies besides reading is playing video games. I also love playing video games together with my boyfriend. It's one of our favorite things to do together if we want to stay in and relax. We also use it for watching movies, listening to music, watching YouTube. So we really do use our PlayStation every day. So of course, things are just things in the end. What's way more important isn't to have the latest or the fanciest, but how we use them and if they truly add value for us. And knowing the difference between wanting to purchase something just for the sake of it versus wanting to purchase something because it can truly enrich your life or it really fits your personality and your lifestyle. Minimalism isn't about deprivation or about not being allowed to buy certain things, but more about really being intentional and mindful and optimizing our purchasing decisions in a way that makes sense. I will try to think about if this item will add enough value to be worth the investment and to be worth the space it takes up or the time it needs for cleaning and maintenance. I think about where the item will go in my home. I think about if I want the high quality fancy one or if I want the lower and the cheaper one because it's not always one or the other. It really depends on all kinds of factors. And so being intentional about this before I make a purchase has made the biggest change for me. So there you have it, my 13 best purchases as a minimalist. I'm sure I forgot one or two. <laughs> and I would also love to know from you what your best purchases are and why. So leave that in the comments. I would love it if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because these things really help to support this channel in the YouTube algorithm. And also don't forget to check out Blinkist, link in the description to get your free trial. If you want more, then right here are 10 things I'm not buying this year. And right here are some tricky types of clutter and how to get rid of them. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Have a lovely day and I will see you again next week. Bye bye.